This time I have a Samsung Plasma set that shuts down. Now, I initially thought that I had it when I looked at it the other day. All the ground screws were loose, so I tightened them up and the set ran. And the set ran actually for almost two days. I was just going to send this thing out and it shut down on me. So we're pulling the back off the set again. We're going to go over it again and see what's really going wrong with this one. So I got a uh, Samsung Plasma to work on from 2010. Apparently it made a clicking sound but won't turn on. I'm going to pull it back before powering it up as I don't want to do any more damage if it's something that's loose. So let's get the back off and check. Well, I know for sure someone's been into this set before because whoever was in it, they had put some of the metal screws, the fine metal screws into plastic, and they had driven plastic screws into metal. And these blocks that are supposed to be used to mount the TV, they're supposed to be screwed down. Well, the screws that hold the top two in are missing. The bottom ones are secured. The top ones were just attached to the back. A lot of good that would do if it had been wall mounted because it would have been basically the back that was holding the set up against the wall. Uh, so someone's been in here, don't know what to expect. Gonna plug it in and see what it does. Before I do that, I'm just gonna make sure that all of the ground screws are tight because, oh yeah, yeah, this might be my problem right here. We might have loose grounds on this set. So I'm just gonna tighten all the ground screws up before I even plug it in. I don't wanna do damage, that one's loose. All these ground screws are loose on here. That one's loose. There's another one down here. It's also really loose. Tighten those up. We all know what, they, oh, that one's really coming loose. Yeah, these are all loose. Every one of these screws has worked its way loose. Now, remember, we've talked about this before. We've talked about loose ground screws on plasma sets. They can arc. When they arc, they can do damage. So that's why I didn't plug the set in. I won't plug it in until after I've uh, tightened everything down. It would be really nice if it was just something that simple. That one's loose too, you see? Like, a, like no effort. Wow. This one here. Yeah, they're all loose. Every one of these. Really loose. Number one cause of failure on all these sets were ground screws that work their way loose. And that happens just from the repeated heating and cooling. They've got a strip of tape on these to hold these connectors in place. I won't bother with them just yet, but we'll just do the grounds first. And uh, see whether the set will turn on. Because there's a chance that that's all that the problem is is loose grounds and there. I mean they're really as you can see how much I'm torquing these down. How's this one? That one's not too bad. This one here. That one's also not too bad. I'll try the signal board over on this side. Okay, I've tightened down the ground screws. Let's uh, try powering up the set. I've got a green flashing light here. The heartbeat light is going. That is a very good sign. Okay, that's a sign that tells me that communication is taking place between the boards and I don't have a board failure. I'm gonna pop my head around the other side of the screen. Looks like it's working to me. So that's uh, something to put in your, your back pocket. Loose ground screws on plasma sets cause all kinds of weird problems, including the set just to shut down. Quite often they blow things up, blow boards up. But in this case, the picture's looking good. I don't see anything blown up on here, which is a good sign. That's the other HDMI input. I've tried both of them. Both HDMI inputs are working on the set. So I'm just going to let this thing run. Make sure it's good. And uh, then I'll throw the back on it. But I let this thing run all night and see how it's looking. Looking so far, so good. Both the HDMI inputs work. I haven't tried the others, but 
I'm sure that they're fine. But uh, anyway, I think we got it. Here's the self-diagnostic sound test. Switch it back to HDMI 1. Source. Now this has got media player in it too. I'm just going to pop in my, uh, my USB stick and see if it'll play my files. I don't know if these ones will play on here or not. Um, I think this is. I think this will play. Might only be. Might only do photos. It should. I think this is HDMI or the uh, USB input here. It should do it. I think it's new enough that it has media play. So menu. It might not. It might only do. Um, might only do photos. Let's just see here. What's it say? Oh, it looks like it might only do photos. Because um, I've got video files on here and it's not recognizing them. I'll, I'll grab another memory uh, card or memory uh, USB. I'll grab one that's formatted differently and see what happens. But it, this may only support, uh, it says media play, it should, should support photos, but I think this one's in EX FAT and it may only support FAT32. Okay, let's try this one. This is a different. USB, Data Traveler, uh, Photo Music, oh, it, does, it, does, it doesn't do, uh, okay, it doesn't do uh, video, photo, is there any photos on here? I don't think there's any photos, there's just 4K video on here. So this is one that only does photos, I'm pretty sure, so let me just go and I'll put some photos on here. Let me just get out of this, how do I get out? Um, that to return. I'll just throw some photos on here so we can display those. And if you plug in um, a USB stick that's in um, EX FAT, it actually locks it up. So I actually had a power, I had shut the set down to get it switched back, uh, which I've had happen before. I have another Samsung that does play, a little newer than this, sitting right behind here, actually, it's mine, uh, that will play the file that's on here. I will play that video, it's my aquarium that's on here. Um, but if I plug in an EX Fat memory stick into that one, it does the same thing. It locks up. This one being a little bit older though, it only supports photos. So I'll throw a few photos on here. Okay, so this time I put some photos on here. Let's bring up the menu. And um, go down to my media play. And this time there should be some photos in here. Oh, look, there's a picture of me on my Harley. Uh, I didn't take the picture, obviously. Actually, you know, the very first video I did was for a guy that had a satellite receiver, and I did one on the power supply repair on his ViewSat receiver. And when I was picking it up, I went out on my bike. He wanted me to fix it at his house. And I said, no, I'm taking it home to fix it. And he took that picture of me and emailed it to me. So there should be a few others on here like me pointing a satellite dish up on the roof. That's like 2000 and uh, I got, think that was 2000 and oh when was that? 2009? 10? Somewhere in there. 7? It was a while back. These are some pictures that I took. 
as you can see it displays photos quite nicely I was playing around with a big lens But as you can see, it displays photos nicely. So this is an update to the Samsung, because I ran it here for uh, a couple days before going back to the customer. Just before I was ready to call the customer and say, hey, you got the TV going, it shut down. So I pulled the set, pulled the back off again, and I've just been looking at the power supply, and this is what I found on the power supply. Let's see if we can get a close-up of this. I can show you guys. Where is it here? There is a capacitor here that has a, a broken connection and you can probably see it wiggling. It's right there. See this? I think that's probably our fault. Big uh, box cap. See the pin? That's cracked. That's this one right here. So I'm going to resolder that and put the put the board back in the set and run it some more and see whether it's really fixed this time because I thought I had it I thought I had it and that's why I picked the video down and I've edited it again I'm going to add this to it and re-render it out because uh, you know I, I was sure when I just tightened all these loose grounds because they were so loose and then of course the set starts working but uh, after running for uh, almost two days, I ran it the rest of the day. It was, uh, what day was it I worked on it? Uh, Wednesday, was it? I think it was Wednesday. It was Wednesday I worked on it. And uh, I ran it all night. I left the thing running all night. Still running in the morning. Shut it off. Turn it on again. Uh, shut it off for a few hours, let it cool down. Turn it back on. It ran for another, I'm going to say... Three four hours. I was just going to give the the uh, owner a call and say, "Hey, I got the TV going," and I walked back out into the shop and it was off. And I thought, "What the hell?" So um, anyway, this is what I've discovered after pulling the board and uh, finding this connection is loose. I'm just going to uh, resolder that and uh, revise the video. Of course, so the original version has been taken down, and you guys can. Watch the revised version. And then I'll get off everybody, all the haters out there. Because the video will be 95% the same, just with the addition of this little discovery. This is one of the reasons why extensive testing is always a good idea when you're working on, especially things that were intermittent, right? It's always a good idea to extensively test. Something I was not always able to do at the shop that I worked at because the owner of the shop was so against running anything any longer than necessary. Um, he was concerned that we'd be watching TV rather than working. You see, so he would come in the back and he would uh, shut stuff off, run it for five minutes. Oh, it's working. I'd be like, no, I'd like to let this thing run for a day or two before sending it back. But the owner was, uh, he would have none of that. I'm just going to look at some more of the connections on here with a magnifying glass just to make sure there's nothing else that may be ready to let go. So I've gone over the board. I don't see any other obvious bad connections anywhere on here. So I'll reinstall the board and uh, we'll test it again. Yeah, it's funny, it waited until I got it all back together. When I had it apart, it didn't fault. The entire time I had it apart, I put it together. Like I, I ran it all night with the back off of it, and it never acted up. So I put the back, I turned it off, and I put the back on it in the morning, and uh, ran it again. And that's when it shut down after it ran for a while. So it might have been just heat related building up. But that was the capacitor there. It was that one? Yeah, it was this one here.
ground screw. Alright, moment of truth. Will it work or will it go boom? And it's turned on. And it's turned on. Okay, good. Well, I guess time will tell. I let it run. And uh, got our heartbeat light here. So everything's good. Uh, Fingers crossed, that's, that's got it. It didn't take that long when I pulled the back off. Literally, when it when it shut down for me, I pulled the back off because I figured, okay, it's got to be a power supply problem. And I took a look at it and I, I spotted that right away. Which would make sense because that's one of the caps that's driving into this transformer here. Okay, so it's done now. I've got the power supply repaired. I'm going to let this thing run. I, I told the customer and I got a hold of them and told them I thought I had it and it, it shut down. So I told him I'm gonna keep it here for a few days. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep this thing here and just run it like crazy. Gotta put the back on it as well so that it builds up heat. But just run this thing like crazy. I'm pretty confident now that I have it because after seeing that physical connection broken on the capacitor, it makes sense that uh, that would certainly cause a shutdown. So if you have a shutdown, intermittent shutdown, check that big box capacitor there on that, uh, on that power supply. Probably tap the set a bit. But I'm pretty confident now that I got it. For you guys that watched the earlier one, oh well, you learned something new. I was certain when I first saw it that all those loose ground screws, because they'll cause that problem, they'll cause the set to shut down. So I was pretty sure when I first saw that, that that was where the problem was going to be. But in this case, it turned out that there was a crack solder connection on a capacitor on the power supply so again I'm gonna end it now because no point in just showing you guys this thing running uh, I'm gonna run it now for the next couple days though before I send it back just to make sure that it doesn't shut down again thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye